It's okay. great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out. I want to begin our conversation with surviving the last three and a half years. How did you get through the pandemic and how did it change you? Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here, Joe. Um, yeah, so gosh, the pandemic, I know that all of us had very different experiences and and some positive and negative, and I think the same probably goes for me as well. So uh, first of all, interestingly enough, it didn't shift my business as much as uh, most people, I think, because I was already doing a lot of my work online and using Zoom and WebEx and all the other online platforms. So for me, um, it, it, it was interesting because I liked the fact that more people were now using it and comfortable with it and, um, and having meetings online. So from a business perspective, it it didn't really affect my business because I was I already have a business that allows me to work and my team to work from home online and it was platforms we were already using. So if, if anything, it it enhanced things for me. Um, I found that for us, uh, a lot of our clients were able to do meetings online, which was definitely a pro. It saved a lot of time. I do a lot of um, traveling and speaking engagements for work. So obviously that cut down more from a, a per I think it affected me more from a personal side because I am such um, an active person and I like to be out. I like, ne I like networking. A big part of my business is networking, presentations, meeting people in person. So although I was still able to do these things on Zoom, it, it doesn't have the same impact as opposed to being in person. I found that, um, you know, I uh, personally, it was more of a, a challenge because again, I like to be out. I like to be active. I had my two kids at home trying to run a business, trying to help them with their schooling. And it was, uh, it was tough. There were times where I found myself, you know, dare I say depressed. I don't typically consider myself to be a very um, down spirited person, but I certainly found myself in in that mode uh, more often than 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 I ever have been. But in that, it forced me to be a little more reflective, and I did become a lot more reflective in those moments, understanding, okay, well, this is where pretty much the whole globe is at, and what are what are ways that we can um, challenge ourselves to do things differently. And so that's what it did. I, it challenged me to do things differently with my kids, different activities, um, you know, doing things more around the home, around, around our community, uh, outdoors when the weather permits. And so, so we kind of, we made lemonade out of lemons and that's, yeah. that's, that's usually my outtake on life. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do for a living. You're obviously an entrepreneur. So if I put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day and one of the kids is curious and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I love that. Oh, what a great question. And if a bunch of third graders. <laughs> it's funny because my kids always ask me, like, what do you actually do? And they're 14 yeah. and 16. So, yeah, so I am an entrepreneur for sure. That is for sure. Through and through. Um, I, I, I own a dental recruiting company. I help dental professionals. Uh, make connections and help them with their staffing. So okay. that would be the short answer of what I do. Okay. But as you, as you know, being you know in the entrepreneurial space, there's so much behind the scenes stuff that yeah. we do to get to that point. But that's that's what I would that's what I would tell third graders. I own my own company. I own yeah. my own dental recruitment and HR company. <laughs> so what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? I you know what. I wasn't one of those kids that grew up saying, knowing exactly what I wanted to be. Um, I still don't know what I want to be. There's so many things that I want to do. I'm always saying yes to opportunities and there's so much out there. There's so much opportunity. There's so much growth. But if I had to pick something, probably it would be a teacher. I would, I, I would probably have said teacher back then. Yeah. So how did you get to a point where being an entrepreneur is your path. Take me back to where you were born and raised. And what were the seeds that became who you are, that grew into who you are? Oh, this is, yeah, great question too. And that's kind of a loaded one, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. Okay. <laughs> um, so I grew up just outside of Toronto, Ontario, in a place called Brampton, Ontario. And, um, you know, I was raised two parents initially, and then they got divorced, but there's five kids in my family. 
So we had a fair sized family. There was seven of us. So anytime we went out for dinner, people always thought it was a, a group of two, like two families. No, 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 this is just us. It's our family. So I grew up in a, in a busy household and my parents got uh, divorced when I was about 13. And I, I probably started my entrepreneurial journey at that point not realizing it, I ended up getting a job I've worked since I was 13 years old. You know, when, when times are tough, we had to rely on ourselves. We knew that our parents weren't going to pay for everything for us. So by age 13, I was pretty much paying for, you know, anything extra I wanted, clothes, anything like that. And um, from there, I ended up, uh, you know, doing various jobs, ending up in the hospitality industry. And I was bartending. And I found that through bartending, gosh, I feel like bartending was almost one of my best educations as opposed to university and college of, that I did because I talked to so many different people and the ability to be able to relate to anybody is such an asset. And I learned that in the hospitality industry and working, you know, uh, at the bar. And so through there, I probably gained a lot of confidence because before that I didn't feel like I had a lot of confidence. I didn't know it was there until I was kind of forced into it. And you're forced to talk to a lot of different people and realizing, hey, you know what? Everybody is kind of, we all have the same needs in life. We all want to be heard. We all want to, you know, we're all here for a purpose. We want to be understood. We want to be appreciated. And it didn't matter whether it was, you know, the, uh, the garbage man, the janitor, all the way up to business owner, CEO, you know, multi-million dollar person. And so we we had just a large array of clientele. And so from there, I met a lot of people and was asked to do some other side jobs with some other entrepreneurs. So I, you know, I, I think I probably learned a little bit of entrepreneurship through there. Uh, from there, I worked at the airport. I was doing ticketing and uh, got to travel all around the world for 27 bucks a flight, wow. which was amazing until 9-11 <laughs> happened. And that was just, you know, another game changer in the world. So I was there. I worked at the airport when that happened. And it was just, gosh, such a, a change. And so I ended up um, going to Japan. And I, I lived in Japan for a couple of years. And I taught English. And it was fantastic. And from there, I got to do more travel. And again, as you do these things, you build more confidence. You meet people. You see so many different um, ideas of what you can do in your life. And I remember, you know, when I finished college and then uh, university, a lot of a lot of my friends immediately, you know, age 21, 22, they're, get, they're going into their careers, their nine to five jobs. And I just it did not interest me. And at the time I was working at the bar and making more money than they made in a whole week. I'd pull in more money in one or two days than they did in five or six days. So then I realized, hmm, there's a better, more efficient way to make money here. So I didn't, uh, I didn't settle down. That's when I went to Japan and um, came back, needed a job because I wanted to buy a, a house and I needed a mortgage. So I needed a job for that, landed a sales job. And in that sales job, it gave me a ton of flexibility for, um, you know, creating my own schedule. So I was behind the desk for the first three months and then they promoted me to outside sales and I flourished. I, you know, I, I was really in my element meeting people, um, with my own schedule, um, you know, building business that way. And that, that's, that's kind of how it started. Yeah. And I, you know, I could keep going on, but, uh, that, that was kind of the start of, of all of this. Yeah. That's that, that, those are all the little seedlings that became who you are. So I'm curious, who's been an inspiration? Who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh my gosh. That's a great question too. You know, I'm going to feel badly saying this, but growing up, I didn't have a hero or a mentor or, or really anybody that I, that I looked up to. I know that sounds really strange because I know most people do. And I, I actually, I envy people like that. I think that, um, without saying too much, I had kind of a, a rough childhood. Like it, it wasn't your typical nice nourished household it wasn't it wasn't like that um I really was I was really independent at a young age and um and I kind of had to figure things out for myself there was really nobody to go to 
and honestly, there weren't really many teachers that actually stood out for me, which is again, unique. Cause I know that a lot of people have inspiring teachers for me. I think it wasn't until my later years, um, getting into more, you know, within the last 10 years, within the last decade, I would say I would, I have more mentors and a lot of people, I do a lot of, you know, research online and YouTube videos and listen to podcasts such as yourself. Um, and those have become my mentors. Those have been my real um, mindset shifts, listening to people, again, like yourself and others who are, are uh, changing, changing the game. And that's, that's really where I get my inspiration from. So speaking of inspiration, if you can meet one person alive on the planet right now, and spend a little time with them, who would it be? So somebody who would be a lot, who's alive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But we can open it up to the ghosts. If there's somebody that that's not around that you would like to meet, that's totally fine. Well, I'm sure there'd, there'd be a few. I'd, oh my gosh. I'd love to meet uh oh my gosh. I'd love to meet Gandhi. I think yeah. that would be a really cool person to meet because I'm similar in that, you know, the not quiet leadership, but humble leadership. Yeah. I admire that. Um right now, you know what? I I'd like to meet Simon Sinek. Okay. He's that that would be somebody I'd like to meet who is alive today. And uh, I find him to be a very sincere thought leader. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan Peterson. That's another one that I'd love to meet. Uh, we'll stick with that. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. So what is the motivation for you every day for the work that you do? You got a lot going on. What gets you out of bed? What motivates you? What makes you evolve as a person? So... I have always had this kind of innate motivation where I, I'm very internally referenced, which basically means that I I compare myself against me. You know, a lot of people compare and judge and uh, against other people. And I really kind of think, okay, how can I be better today than I was yesterday, even if it's by a little bit? Because I understand, you know, the compound effect, Dan Hardy, compound effect of doing little habits every single day. And so... I wake up with an inspiration because I I feel I'd say my kids my kids of course inspire me in a way that obviously I have to take care of them and I want to provide a wonderful life for them but I also want a wonderful life for me and I have I feel really purposeful driven because I I like to help other people and I I'm moving towards something bigger that I don't know exactly what it is yet and that might sound interesting because I love what I do every day uh, obviously, there's ups and downs. I love the people that I work with. Um, but I feel like there's something bigger, and I can't tell you what it is. I just know that there's something inside of me pulling me that way. Yeah, I understand. I get it for sure. So what's been one of the best success stories you've been involved with as a professional that always puts a smile on your face? Okay, so uh, I'll bring you back to you know, my entrepreneurial journey. So told you that I lived in Japan, came back, got that sales job, ended up getting married and uh, having two kids. I left that corporate career to stay at home with the kids, which I love. Honestly, my kids are actually my best success story. I can tell you right now that the best years of my life were when when they were young and, and they were growing and developing. I, I love it. I love being a mom, but I also love being an entrepreneur and building things and being creative. So while um, my kids were younger, they were two and four, I was introduced to an opportunity from a friend. She said, asked me to come to a meeting. And uh, it was one of those things, one of those network marketing meetings. And I initially stuck my nose up at it because I was like, ah, oh, one of those things, no thanks. No, they're pyramid schemes and, and la la la, not really knowing much about it. So anyway, she bribed me to go to this thing because she said, I'll take you out for a drink afterwards and we'll have a girl's night. I said, fine, I'll go. So I ended up going. I was blown away by this company. And um, <laughs> I ended up being very intrigued, came home, told my then husband. And he's like, seriously, you're never going to make any money at this thing. 
So I think that's what gave me a little bit of inspiration and an edge to, to prove them wrong. And so I end up joining the company and within, you know, three, four years, I end up making the top of the company become, you know, six figure income earner and uh, grew teams of thousands of people globally. And, uh, and so that was something that was, I never in a million years would have thought that would have happened. It was one of the also best experiences that I've had because I've had I, I had the opportunity to work with so many wonderful people, uh, and also they became my mentors. And that that opportunity led me into what I'm doing now. So I will forever be grateful for that opportunity and experience. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the senior in high school, eighteen year old version of you, and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life up to this point. What advice would you give that young version of you? I would say be patient. Yeah. Yeah, be patient. No need to rush on things. Things yeah. that are worth it will wait yeah. if it's meant to be. Yeah. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. So I would say that that most people think that I have everything in life put together, right? On the surface, it's like the highlight reel on social media. Everything's perfect. Yeah. You know, my kids are perfect, my house, everything, you know, business and just wrote two books and oh, you know, everything. And I've been told this my entire life, by the way, that people think that everything comes easy for me. Yet when they get to know me and realize that, oh, wow, you've actually had a kind of a difficult life. And um, I think because of those difficulties and the adversity, especially growing up and, and experiencing some things, I think that that has led me to the person I am today, which has created the strong facade of being independent because I've always had to be independent and I don't know any different. Yeah. So people see that, which is true. But there's also an incredibly softer, vulnerable, empathetic side to me that I think most people don't see. And, uh, and, and it's definitely there. But I think that also contributes to more of a humble leadership style, which I appreciate. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. So if anyone out there wants to pick up your books, hire you, learn more about you, reach out, what's the best way to do that? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm all, I'm on social media, of course, at Melissa Barlock. You can find me LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or you can go to my website, inspireopportunities.com. So, uh, and my book is on Amazon. Actually, both books are on Amazon. I'll show you them right here. Excellent. There's two books there. And yeah, go to Amazon, the social media, Melissa Barlock. You can search me on any search engine and, and I'll pop up. So I'd love to hear from you. I love it. Melissa, thank you for your story. Thank you for your time. Keep doing the good work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.